Netbooks. When I say that word, you likely think of thick but fairly small x86 laptops from around 2007 to 2012, often with about 6 to 11 inch displays, cramped keyboard, and uh, we don't talk about the trackpads. Netbooks were meant to be budget laptops, small and portable enough to be perfect for school or even just around the house. It wasn't a bad concept, but it was executed horribly, and I can honestly say without a doubt, netbooks were one of, if not the biggest scams in the tech industry of all time, namely thanks to Microsoft. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a retrospective look at Netbooks, a former product that was ultimately ruined mostly by Microsoft and their desire for money. That's a tiny netbook. Yeah, it's, it's good looking, lightweight. Generally awesome. And you can just go online, video chat with my cousin. This is under, under two hundred dollars. Are you some kind of mind reader? The visionary? No, I have them. The new lightweight HP Mini Netbook with Windows and America's largest and most reliable 3G network built in. Only one ninety nine ninety nine. With the lifespan of the netbook was a short and kind of painful one, and one that was started in late 2007. The Asus EPC is credited with the beginning of the netbook boom, being an absolutely tiny laptop looking device with a 7 inch display, either a Linux based operating system or a version of Windows XP, a 4 gigabyte solid state drive, remember this is 2007, and the whole package came in at around $399. For this laptop, that might sound like a lot, but don't forget how how expensive, big, and clunky laptops were around this era. A promise of a tiny device that was significantly cheaper than Windows laptops seemed like a really good idea, especially for college students and the like who were on limited budgets but needed a laptop easy to bring around. We'll come back to the EPC, but I want to quickly mention that netbooks, while they look like a laptop and quack like a laptop, they aren't really a laptop. I mean, they are, but they were presented as their own kind of thing initially. Kind of like how tablets nowadays aren't laptops, but they kind of can be, especially if they run Windows and have attachable keyboards. But back to the EPC, when it came with the Linux version called Xandros, from what I can tell, while the OS looked pretty bland, it seemed fairly usable. Windows XP likely would have been rougher, but that was an option as well. 4 gigabytes was a pathetic amount of space, but if you were using it for text documents and web browsing, you didn't really need any more. The SSD ensured relatively fast speeds, and it's fair to say some people were quite impressed. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the EPC was pretty much the peak of the netbook line. Yeah, the first one. It represented something new, something different, something kind of innovative. It was almost like a concept device, a good idea that was soon to be butchered in every way imaginable, thanks to the garbage bloated hardware that would follow, as well as the rise of tablets. It also didn't help that in 2008 the MacBook Air was announced, and not only was it a lot thinner and a lot lighter than a lot of netbooks, but it completely blew them out of the water in terms of power and overall usefulness. They were actual laptops and could be used as such, whereas netbooks were netbooks. But the MacBook Air wasn't cheap, and because of that, netbooks would stick around and continue to gain in popularity. I'm not doing this video just to blast netbooks. It might sound like that so far, and I'm sure some of you clicked on this video thinking, hey, I used to have a netbook, I liked that thing. And if it worked for you, that's great. But unfortunately, I think for most people, the negatives outweighed the positives. But there is good and bad, so let's start with the good of netbooks. These were the days before tablets, ultrabooks, and Chromebooks, meaning regular old laptops for what you were looking at in terms of portable computing. And besides them being huge and clunky, they were also very expensive with absolutely terrible battery life. And so it made sense an alternative would be able to slip into the cheaper market with a smaller device and better battery. Netbooks that ran lightweight versions of Linux and even Windows XP were generally decent little web browsing machines. Of course, nowadays they wouldn't be able to handle the web, but back then it was a lot more simplistic. With these very light, tiny devices that for the time were attractively designed, as opposed to the typical almost industrial look of other laptops, you were getting multiple hours of battery life on a streamlined experience. These things were called netbooks for a reason. Similar to Chromebooks of today, the web is all they were really meant for. Netbooks quickly took off in popularity, as the truth was much like today, when it comes to laptops, most people don't need them for anything more than basic web browsing. In the July of 2008, netbooks only made up 1% of all laptop sales, but by the December, they owned nearly a fifth of the entire market. You know that whole suffering from success meme? That's basically what happened to 
into netbooks. They were doing too well, and that's a big part of their downfall. Manufacturers were pushing screen sizes even larger to 9 and 10 inches, and they packed them with more storage. And it was all accessible for often less than or around $300, at least for the lower tier models. Come 2009, not even two years after the first netbook, and we started to see the beginning of the end. Coincidentally, right around when Windows 7 came out. My turn. One sec. I have to tweet the deets so that the Hendersons know where to rendezvous. Here you go. Thanks, Mom. Hey, son, I'm a bit turned around. Can you drop a pin on it? Sure, Dad. Hmm. So it says to head west on 85, which is coming up in a few miles. Thanks, buddy. Now back to friendly. As netbooks kept getting better, and the sales did as well, hardware manufacturers began to get unhappy. People weren't buying their expensive crap, and that was no good. Microsoft and Intel started to pressure netbook makers to limit the specs, and Windows 7 licensing costs were made more expensive for any machine with a screen size over 10.1 inches, which completely halted netbook innovation in terms of form factor. And now we start to see the bad, and I do think it really started with Windows 7. Early netbooks weren't great by any means. As lightweight as Windows XP was, it could still be a bit of a struggle on the low tier x86 Intel processors. And of course, we won't even talk about Vista because it was pretty much irrelevant. The Linux based OSs fared better, but as a consumer, if you had the choice of some OS you had never heard of or Windows, you were going to choose Windows. Introducing Windows 7 Starter Edition, perhaps one of the biggest scam jobs from Microsoft of all time. It was made exclusively for netbooks and would come pre installed. You couldn't buy a license for it even if you wanted to. Windows 7 Starter was a monumentally stripped down version of Windows 7, removing things like UI options, personalization features like changing desktop backgrounds, you couldn't change the wallpaper, what the heck Microsoft, as well as the removal of multi-monitor support, which would have been really nice considering how small netbooks were. Imagine if you could have hooked it up to your TV. They also got rid of the ability to switch between users without fully logging off, no DVD playback, XP compatibility mode, and quite a few more things. You couldn't change the wallpaper. I want to emphasize how dumb that is. There was no reason for them to do that. They just did that to try to encourage you to buy actual Windows 7. Who the heck decided that would be a good idea? Despite the stripped down options, Windows 7 still chugged with the lower powered Intel Atom processors netbooks came with, not to mention the pathetic amounts of RAM. Suddenly netbooks went from decent lightweight internet machines to the bloated sluggish experience netbooks were created to get away from in the first place. It might not be fair to fully blame Microsoft for the downfall of netbooks, but gosh darn if they didn't help it along. It honestly makes me angry how they completely ruined what could have been a really good thing. You could upgrade to that better version of Windows if your computer had the minimum required specs, but let's be real, the kind of person buying a netbook wasn't going to try to make it any better. These are the kind of people who buy it for a simple streamlined experience, and while netbooks were still somewhat that, the artificial restrictions Microsoft demanded guaranteed a lackluster time for the user. If you bought a netbook, you probably weren't ever going to buy another one because you wouldn't have a good time. These people also didn't have a ton of money, which is part of the reason why they were buying a netbook. So why would Microsoft expect them to buy full Windows 7. That's insane. But if you wanted to change your wallpaper, that's what you had to do. Or get around it by editing the registry and whatnot. While all this was happening, regular laptops were getting better. I've mentioned the MacBook Air already, but Windows laptops were slowly improving too, getting slimmer with better batteries and actually half-decent hardware. And come 2010, the death of the netbook was cemented with the launch of the Apple iPad. As much as Microsoft tried its best, what really killed netbooks off were the tablets. If a product is cheap, no matter how crappy it is, people will still buy it. So netbooks still had a shot, until that iPad. Apple made the initial jump with iPad, and soon after you had dozens of cheap Android imitations that as crappy as some of them were, were just as capable of the web browsing and Facebook use that netbooks were. Sales began to plummet, and by about 2012, netbooks had finally about died off. This was even further cemented with Windows 8, a piece of software that was almost fully designed for tablets. You might remember that everyone hated Windows 8, and the reason was is because it was designed with touchscreens in mind. This would leave netbooks in the dust, not to mention that netbooks didn't have the hardware necessary to run Windows 8 in the first place. Of course, Windows 8 was a disaster and most people skipped it, but at the time it was pretty clear that Microsoft didn't care about netbooks and were ready to move on. And then Chromebooks came in and uh, replaced netbooks in the market. Except Chromebooks were actually half decent because they didn't struggle to run Windows, but instead ran the very lightweight Chrome OS. They were pretty limited, but so were netbooks. Chromebooks definitely have had their flaws, but considering how cheap they've typically been, 
it's tough to complain, and they have the tendency to age better than netbooks have. Before I get comments saying your school has Chromebooks or whatever and they suck, yes, Chromebooks are still cheap and don't have great hardware, but schools have the tendency only to replace laptops like that every five years or whatever, and that means regardless of what they get, the hardware is going to be slow at some point. Similar to netbooks, Chromebooks weren't made for productivity work, at least beyond Google Docs and Slides. I actually had one in high school and uh, used it for a while until the battery decided to crap out on me for no reason. But perhaps talking more about Chromebooks would be a good idea for another video, so I think I'll save it for now. Chuck Norris nikomu nic ne daruje. Netbooks died off thanks to a combination of factors. Microsoft was a big one, iPads were even bigger, but ultimately their limited hardware just couldn't keep up. Technology was changing at a rapid rate, and already underpowered hardware from 2010 or whatever would really feel it straight out of the box, not to even mention a year or two down the line. Windows 7 Starter Edition was just kind of the nail in the coffin. The netbook I've been showing here is my mom's, and to say she was disappointed with it when it was purchased would be a bit of an understatement. Not only did it come with a crappy trial version of Word, but the keyboard is a bit cramped and it's just not a pleasant experience. The trackpad is just awful, although she, and probably most netbook users, did use a wireless mouse. Netbooks had their limited use cases, but the makers marketed them hard and almost fooled buyers into thinking they'd be more capable than they were. The four years of netbooks were kind of an anomaly in the tech market, and I kind of doubt we ever see anything quite like it again. But it's still fun to see what used to be, and in an alternate universe, what could have been. Had Microsoft not put the Windows 7 starter limitation, who knows what would have happened. I think tablets still would have won out, but netbooks might have survived for a bit longer. Also, some of the designs when it came to netbooks were really darn unique. Lots of different colors, patterns, in a time where gray and black were usually all you were getting in laptops. As much as I'm not a fan of how companies essentially exploited their customers by pushing out crap hardware, admittedly it did result in a few interesting designs. Some of the colors for Acer Aspires from this box, for example, they had a blue and a reddish brown color, and if you look closely at the netbook, you'll see what looks like a water drop on the top. I like that. It's also kind of sparkly, which I'm not a fan of, but it is different. The water drop, though, it's a simple touch, but one that I appreciate. But with that, I think I'm pretty much about done here. Not the most in-depth video out there, I'm sure, but hopefully it's given you a quick look at what netbooks were and why they pretty quickly failed. So if anyone ever asks you whatever happened to netbooks, you can tell them Intel and Microsoft, Windows 7 Starter Edition, followed by tablets. That's pretty much how they died. And you know what? While netbooks have all the telltale signs of an ugly laptop with crappy cheap plastic, huge thick bezels, tiny touchpad, and crappy keyboard, I can't help but appreciate the form factor and general look. It's almost cute in a way, a relic of a time long past and one that'll never come by again. Did you ever have a netbook? Did you like it? Did it work for you? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And we also have a Discord, come drop by and say hi. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time. I'll come back to the EPC, but I want to mention that netbooks, while they quack like a duck and look like a duck, aren't really 